So my name is Eric Duncan, as I was giving the pictures you've seen, but log homes. <laughs> um, I'm a software developer in New York, I'm more of a consultant. So I tend to build my own type of frameworks I put on GitHub just to help me and my teams move forward quickly. I do a lot of prototyping for a lot of startups. So today I'd like to talk about a BDD framework. Yeah, there's not any that exists. There's actually many BDD frameworks for um, Go. Uh, Go Cove was one of the first ones I started with. That was a great, I kind of had the Ruby uh, cucumber vibe that I believe um, Kathleen, I think was her name, was talking about earlier. We actually were talking about that yesterday and uh, how I actually was doing, when I was doing Ruby, I was actually doing a lot of uh, cucumber specifications as well. Uh, I'm not gonna poll the audience because of the time we have, but um, for those that don't know BDD, it's, there's the people who tend to just follow the stories and just try to write a story and then write some code. And then there's people kind of like me who tried to sit in with the CEOs and business people and try to capture the domain. And there's a couple different ways to do that. There's like event storming and brainstorming. There's things you can put on the board. Um, when I actually have a laptop in front of me, I try to actually capture their domain in real time. And to do that, I tend to use BDD for that. And .NET, my background's in .NET, so coming from .NET, there's a fairly famous one, well, I call it famous, called machine.specifications, or MSpec for short. What I liked about that framework, opposed to all the others, or some great BDD frameworks for .NET, is that he tried to make it as least terse as possible, just so you can quickly spec your features without worrying about any testing, any coding, any interfaces or nothing. So with that, I brought that concept to Go, and I call it MSpec for Go, or Go MSpec. This is before I read the tweet from Rob about, you don't have to keep Go in the package name, but oh well. So with that said, here's a test where we're actually specking out some code. I actually have some real code, such as uh, birthing a dog, and how you're painting the dog and stuff, but and washing the dog. But this is just a quick example about how this kind of works. This is one of the examples inside of the Git repo. So in a standard um, BDD context, you have given, and you can have additional ands and ands, and when something happens, it should do this, should do that. That's basically what this is. And it's not any kind of different than several other BDD frameworks out there, but there's some other things that set it apart that I'll show in a few moments. So it's a standard way. Given a dog that has been painted red, and the paint is washable, and no one has washed the dog yet, there's our setup. When washing the dog, of course we're going to wash it, it should have the paint come off, it should have a normal color, it should smell like a clean dog. You know, standard BDD specification, kind of standard frameworks. Is that font big enough for everyone? Do I need to increase it? I'm sorry? All right. We're gonna start reducing fonts. <laughs> well, there's nothing after, after it. So this is just a standard frame. There's nothing real different about this. So run out of time, I'm just gonna show, show a few things. The thing behind this framework is I allow you to spec without writing any code. So here's an example where I give a given, given a valid API. I don't know what a valid API is gonna look like. I don't care. Somebody, I was sitting with a client, they're actually talking about, I wanna know when it's something's invalid, I wanna handle all these error cases. So, great. As you notice, the first one, I didn't have anywhere after it. This is valid code, it compiles. It won't do much, but it will at least compile. So it won't break your test as you're going. Here's another one, given an invalid API, what do I do next? Well, I wanna capture when I get, when I call get users, but not right now. We don't really know spats, we don't care about that right now. So I'm just gonna leave that to the side, but at least capture it without a, without the, any kind of specs to that win. I'll at least capture that thought and we can go back to it. So then here, when, I actually start implementing some ideas. When get status is called, it should do this, it should do that, it should do this, but notice there's no implementations to any test either. So the way I kind of handle this, and just to show a quick demo of what happens when you do that, and if you didn't notice, I actually used a standard Go testing package. You can see come here and these right here is what I just showing at the bottom. So given, let was highlight, actually, you know what? It's full test, so was it dash run, specking a new feature? Yeah, there we go. So you can, just, you can filter it down to run individual unit tests if you want. So here, as you can see, what I was demoing earlier, 
features, specting a new feature, given a valid API, given an invalid API, knows there's nothing under valid API because we didn't have anything. When get users is called, we didn't have anything under get users, who cares? But hey, right here, under get status, it should return this, return that, and notice there's a nice big fat not implemented right under it. What I liked about in specifications from .NET is like this right here, this portion up here. You can spec out all your code, what you're gonna do the whole day, print that out, stick it on your door, shut your door if you have an office, and say, this is what I'm working on, leave me alone. And they actually see what you're gonna be implementing for the rest of the day. So with that said, I'm just showing a little bit more code here, just to kind of show it in real time. So as you can see, just test. The testing is part of the method where it actually comes out. I know a lot of people, we don't like to do underscores in tests, but it's part of the actual conversion part. So test, um, well, I'm actually running out of time, so I'm just gonna leave that alone. I'm just gonna leave it there and say thank you. But um, let's go in spec. Oh, github.com slash go in spec there. And BD specifications for go. Any questions?